Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. This video was made possible by Beaver Lab, who sent me their TW1 Pro Telescope for my review. They did not pay me for this review outside of that, but full disclosure, they did provide the telescope for free. You can find a link to this telescope in the video description. The TW1 Pro Telescope is described in its listing on Amazon as a smart digital refracting astronomy telescope with a Wi-Fi enabled 4K camera. There are no eyepieces for this telescope, it only uses the camera that it comes with for viewing objects. It's a manually pointed telescope on an altitude azimuth mount. Beaver Lab sent me this unit for review and we're going to take a look at what it can do. After opening up the outer boxes, we find that the package contains three blue boxes. We have a box for the tripod, a box for the optical tube assembly, and a box for smaller accessories. The optical tube assembly comes stored inside a soft fabric carry case with Velcro straps to keep it secure during transportation. Inside the soft zipper case we find the optical tube assembly, a red dot finder, and the camera unit inside a soft pouch with a drawstring secured by an elastic band. The instructions say to fully charge the camera before use, so the first thing you're going to want to do is pull the camera out of that case and find the USB cable included in the small blue accessories box to put the camera on charge. You will need to plug it into a USB port or provide your own AC adapter. Also, pay careful attention to the two thin rubber gaskets that encircle the front end of the camera. I found that these are easily lost if they become dislodged, and it's easy to dislodge them when you first pull it out, so be careful of that. Now you can remove the tripod from its box and assemble the optical tube assembly on top of the tripod. A single bolt holds the telescope on the tripod, but there are three guide rods on the bottom of the tube assembly that will need to fit into the tripod. These go in easily as long as you have the alignment correct. Once installed, you can attach the red finder dot onto the arm next to the optical tube. This is held in place by a single set screw. The red dot finder will need to be adjusted to be co-aligned with the main telescope. The screw on the underside of the red dot adjusts the vertical alignment, while the knurled knob at the back end of the red dot adjusts the lateral alignment. In order to align the red dot finder, you'll need to first complete setting up the camera. The camera has a circular indicator light that will slowly pulse red while it's charging and remain solid red once fully charged. Once it's charged, it's ready to be installed in the focus tube of the telescope. First remove the dust cover on the front end of the camera, exposing the image sensor. The rubber gaskets on the front end of the camera will form a tight seal inside the focus tube, so it takes a little bit of force to get the camera installed. You'll also need to keep the pin on the camera's side of the bayonet mount lined up with the unlock symbol on the top of the focus tube. Then rotate clockwise once it's fully inserted in order to lock it into place. Now let's talk about the app for the camera. The camera can be controlled with an Android or iOS device, and you can find a QR code to the app in the instruction manual. The manual also contains the password for the camera's Wi-Fi network, and although it's a very simple code, you won't be able to get into the camera without it, so don't lose it. You can turn on the camera by pressing the large button at the back end for two seconds. Double tapping the button switches between the USB and Wi-Fi connection modes. When you connect to the camera on your device, it will occupy your Wi-Fi connection for that device, so it's not going to try to connect to your home network. I found this preferable for security reasons, but be aware in case you had any intentions of streaming video from the telescope. Now you're going to want to point the telescope at a distant stationary target so that you can align the red dot finder. The yellow knob on the left side of the telescope is the focus adjustment for the camera. If the target is a light of some kind, you're going to want to adjust the focuser to make the light smaller and smaller until it reaches focus. Then you'll adjust the red dot to co-align it with the telescope. My first target was Venus, in the video you see playing here. After focusing on Venus, I found that the camera's automatic exposure setting overexposed Venus, and I actually had to set it to manual with as little exposure as possible in order to avoid overexposing the bright planet. The line you see passing through Venus here is actually a diffraction spike caused by Venus being behind a power line at that moment. For the record, I also tried the video recording mode in Beaver Lab's app, but it crashed my tablet every time I tried to go into the video mode, so I had to stick with the screen recording software I used to record the app. You might be noticing how long it's taking Venus to stabilize after I touch the focuser. I found that it actually took about 5 seconds for vibrations to fully dampen with the tripod legs fully extended. 
even though you won't be looking through an eyepiece, you'll still want it to be at a comfortable height to move the telescope around. I found that adding anti-vibration pads that I had for my other telescopes brought this vibration time down to about two and a half seconds. That does still feel a little bit long when you're trying to adjust the focus, so maybe in a future version, Beaver Lab can consider adding a heavier duty tripod as an optional accessory. I found a similar situation when I pointed it at the moon. The automatic exposure setting has the moon overexposed, so I have to go to manual exposure and turn that way down in order to see the craters and Maria on the daylit side of the moon. With the exposure set high, I can actually start to see some earthshine and stars near the moon, even though the daylit side is completely overexposed. I even caught a jetliner transiting the moon, though I wasn't looking at my tablet when it happened and I shook the telescope by adjusting the focus as it was happening, so I really only have this one clear frame to show for it. It wasn't until I reviewed the screen and the footage after the fact that I noticed what had happened. Now let's talk for a moment about what it's like to try to move the telescope around and point at various objects. I took this picture with my cell phone through the red dot finder and you can see that the telescope is pointed at the Pleiades. Bright targets can be seen through the red dot finder, but dim targets like the Orion Nebula, even under fairly dark skies, can be tricky to see because the red dot finder doesn't have any real light gathering ability. It's just a 1x optic with no lens to help try to gather light or magnify the target. In my experience and in my opinion, that kind of setup can be just fine when the telescope has to go to capability and can find dim targets for you. But this telescope doesn't have any motors and you're pointing at each target by hand. And that can be tricky when you're trying to peer through a small red dot finder that isn't magnifying your target or gathering light and you're trying to point at dim objects. The field of view of the main camera of the telescope is 29.2 by 34.9 arc minutes according to some astrometry I ran on an image. In other words, the field of view is about half a degree by half a degree. So that is the level of accuracy with which you need to point at things in order to find them in the frame. By comparison, that cluster of stars you see in the red dot finder is almost four times as large. There's no other eyepieces that you can put in this telescope. It can only be used with the camera it came with, and that's operating at a fixed focal length of 500 millimeters. While it's easy enough to point at a bright target like the moon or Venus or bright stars, trying to find dimmer targets like the Orion Nebula is quite tricky. This was a task that took me about 20 minutes to do because the glass of the red dot finder dims the nebula a little bit and makes it harder to see, even with the red dot brightness turned down. With the exposure set to the max, this is what I was able to get when pointed at the trapezium in the middle of the Orion Nebula. There's not much nebula to be seen. Even if I crank the curves up on this image, this is all you can see. For daytime observations and bird watching, it's definitely possible to use a Beaver Lab telescope as a spotting scope, but be careful not to point it anywhere near the sun. You can do some plane spotting as well with the red dot finder, but without the ability to adjust the focus while you're staring through the finder to try to track the plane, you'll just have to guess at what the focus should be. The telescope does have markings on the focus tube with a moon to indicate where the infinity focus point should be when it's retracted up to that point flush with the back of the telescope. It also has a symbol for mountains to indicate slightly closer but still distant objects like distant trees. I wouldn't rely on it to try to give you perfect focus, but it at least gives you a ballpark to aim for, which is particularly helpful when doing daytime terrestrial observations of targets at various distances. So what are my thoughts about this telescope? Let's sum it all up. Let's start with the specs. It has an 82mm lens, a 500mm focal length, which gives it an f-ratio of 6.1. Your typical long tube refractor that you're going to find at a big box store is going to typically have a much higher focal ratio with a much higher focal length. This actually would make it a lot trickier to point the telescope, especially when mounted with a camera like this at a fixed focal length where you can't change the magnification. The trade-off of that lower, faster f ratio is that you actually get more color fringing in an achromatic telescope, which you can definitely see with bright targets like Venus or the Moon. Given that the telescope needs to be manually pointed and the magnification can only be increased with digital zoom and not decreased any further, you definitely want that lower focal length. 
That F ratio number of 6.1 also means that compared to your typical big box store telescope with a long focal length refractor, this telescope is better suited to putting more photons in each pixel of the camera, which would be good for trying to detect dim objects. However, because of the limitation of the fact that this telescope doesn't have any motors for tracking and you're just manually pointing it, the maximum exposure it can achieve is fairly limited. So when we looked at the Orion Nebula, we really didn't see much nebulosity there. And that's the brightest nebula you're probably going to see with this thing. Anything dimmer than that is just going to be below the detection threshold of the camera. It's really best suited for bright targets like the moon, planets, or brighter stars. As for the mount, it's a fairly simple to operate altitude azimuth mount, but trying to make fine corrections to it is very hard because even with the set screws applied about 50% to try to add a bit of friction to it so that it moves fairly slowly, it can be a bit sticky at the half a degree wide field of view, and so it's easy enough to overshoot the target. The scope also shakes for about 5 seconds with the tripod legs fully extended, though this time can be cut roughly in half with the use of anti-vibration pads. The camera's battery was at about 50% power after about an hour of use, so I expect you could get about 2 hours out of it in the Wi-Fi mode, but your mileage may vary, especially depending on your outdoor temperature. The app that comes with it is multi-purpose for various products made by Beaver Lab. I've only tested it with the telescope, of course, and for that purpose it's easy enough to operate the camera as a video device, but it does have some bugs, including the fact that you can't record video with it natively, so for videos like this you'll have to use screen recording software, at least until Beaver Lab fixes the bugs. I'll be honest, when Beaver Lab reached out to me about this telescope, I don't think I could have been more skeptical about it but it did exceed my expectations when it comes to looking at a bright object like the moon. It's less than $400, it doesn't have tracking motors or go-to capability, but the wireless camera it comes with is actually able to deliver a good image of the moon for a beginner telescope. When it comes to deep sky objects though, I highly recommend that you also have a good pair of binoculars so that you can learn how to navigate the sky and star hop to deep sky objects like the Orion Nebula and the Andromeda Galaxy. I think there's an important and even visceral experience to be had in seeing some of these objects directly through the glass, whether with binoculars or a telescope with an eyepiece. And this particular telescope cannot be used with any standard eyepieces, it can only be used with the camera it comes with. But with those caveats and limitations stated, if you're interested in picking up the Beaver Lab telescope, you can find a link to it in the video description. I hope you found this video informative, and until next time, thanks for watching, and clear skies.